So Sandy, um, I've I've heard about you. I've I've heard of you and seen your pictures. I saw you in the '68 comeback. You're sitting right there, literally on the stage. I mean, yeah. you're right there yeah. with Elvis. That's crazy. It was wonderful. You knew Elvis personally. Yes, I was you, a fan. You took you were a fan, but but he. I was a gate fan. He took a liking to you though, specifically. It sounds apparently like. silly man. Yeah. <laughs> And, but you took a lot of pictures of Elvis. I did. I did. And this, uh, by the way, friends, I'm going to show you right here on the wall. This is Sandy and Elvis. Here's two different poses. And that is a Sandy Miller right there and a Sandy Miller right here. And 50 years later. <laughs> Sandy, you don't look 50 years <laughs> older. <laughs> so, oh, long yeah. time. <laughs> but that's incredible. Yeah. And, and something that you and I talked about was we're at this party and most of the people here at this party now, there's a few exceptions, but most of us never, ever met him. I know. That's never. amazing. And you'd never know it. And we are all huge, huge fans. fans. Yes. And we wish that we had the opportunity to do what you did. I wish everybody could have met him. Yeah. Everybody, even just for five minutes. Yeah. Just an incredible person. Oh, amazing. Yeah. He was very... Eccentric, yeah. quirky, fun to be around, um, just a different sort of guy. Can you tell us some of his quirks? <laughs> something, something odd that people wouldn't know about. Oh, he had food issues. Really? <laughs> yeah. um, he would go on food kicks. Where yeah. He'd eat the same thing every day. Um, and you know, I do that. Yeah, if I, I really I, like something, I think a lot of people. I'll, I'll eat it till yeah. I can't stand it anymore, and then I move on. But, but um, that's a uh, that's a creative thing, I think. You I know. don't know what it is. But, yeah. And he was a perfectionist to the point of being annoying. Um, we used to go to his rehearsals at RCA Studios in LA. You know, he usually show up at the studio about ten o'clock at night. He rehearsed until three, four in the morning, and it would not be unusual for him to sing the same darn song for two hours. Really? And we're just like, hmm, next, <laughs> do something else, please. And you couldn't hear any difference between one song and the other, but I he could. I could, but he could. Right. And he, he'd slow it down, he'd speed it up, he'd say, you were off, you were, too, you were too fast, you were too slow. And that was RCA Studio B? That was RCA right off Sunset. Okay. Yeah. So... So you're that, saying right off Sunset... In LA. in L.A. So you're talking about the L.A. I'm version. LA. We're not talking about Nashville RCA. No, I never went to Nashville. It was this. That's was, right. You're a California I'm girl. I'm California girl. Okay. Um, and then other times he'd show up, and every, everybody would be at the studios. Everybody came in their own cars, and he'd be in the studio for five minutes and go, "Okay, everybody here. Okay, let's go home." Really? <laughs> well, thanks. We just drove 50 miles, and now we're all going home. So yeah, he was quirky. He'd just be weird. Wow. But um, but when he was recording and he wanted to get something right, he would stay and do it until he got it right. It had to be it absolute had to be, perfection had to, to be him. Perfect. Yep, to him. Because you you know, for, uh, as an outsider looking in, I always kind of thought that that he was more um, that a lot of this was not so much him that it was other people saying. I want you to do this. I want you to no, do that. It so was him. it was his creativity. Yeah, that's what made it amazing. Yeah, because when I hear uh, some of the stuff and the song choices and the things, I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, he would make lists of songs that he planned to sing. Yeah, and there was actually some. Uh, he explained it once. I don't remember how it went. You know, they'd have a couple of fast ones, and then he'd have to put in a slow one. And I don't. There was some. There was some reason for all that. But like I said, I don't remember what it was. Um, but he explained it one night. He explained everything in the greatest... That was one of his quirky things. Everything was explained in great detail. To the point where sometimes you were afraid to ask him something because you would get an hour explanation. Like he had on a gorgeous ring one night. And it was a black diamond. And one of the girls in the room said something about you know, what an unusual ring. And we're like, oh no, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it was 
where it was mined, when it was mined, who first owned it, what jeweler said it, you know, how his jeweler got it. I mean, you got, you got a 45 minute history lesson on this ring. But it sounds like that he loved the that detail. about things, about the history of things meant something to him. Yes, he knew the detail, he knew the history, but, um, yeah, but he did that about a lot of things. Did you ever go to Graceland? I did three times when he was alive. Um, the first time, we it used to be um, they would send invitations to the fans for the New Year's Eve party he would have. So, you know, fans were actually invited to go to his New Year's Eve party. Yeah. So, yes, so my roommate and I went to, um, we, we went to three, three New Year's Eve parties back in the 60s. And, um, yeah, and that was amazing. Um, it had he, to be incredible. He rented out a club. Yeah. And Because they didn't have them at Graceland. No, they no, would no. go to, one of them was the... There was a Thunderbird Club or something? Yeah, and I was trying to think. Um, I have recently looked it up. The club, the building is still there. Really? Yeah, one of them. Um, and I plan on going and filming there. I hadn't done oh. it, but I was trying to think. It wasn't the Thunderbird. It was... Um, it was a, another single word okay. like that, though. I'll have to figure that out. Yeah. So they, they, we had those parties, and we went to the Memphian, and um, and then back to Graceland, which we had not expected to be taken back to Graceland. So we actually got to see Graceland at Christmas time, and they had more than one tree up. They had several trees up inside, and we're like, Oh, you got more than one Christmas tree. So you know, he said, Well, this is the family Christmas tree, and there were like unwrapped gifts this is after christmas there were unwrapped gifts under this one tree one of those silver metal trees yeah. with a with the spotlights the, the circle yeah with that thing that would change yeah, yeah. that tacky thing. that gaudy thing in the gaudy <laughs> tree yeah and all the packages under there they weren't opened and we're like you saw that package he goes those are gifts that the fans have sent and he goes no one opens them but me so what the deal was, was when he had time, not only when he had time, but they also had to wait for the secretary to be available to write down a thank you note, a or thank you note of what it was. So they did a few here and they did it when they had time and, um, and he would open them and it would be recorded by the secretary. And I guess she sent out thank you notes. I don't know. Wow. Um, but only he opened them which I thought was awesome. And we gave him gifts over the years, and you never know, you know, if you send him something, does he, you know, does he really get them? Yeah. So one of the things we sent him, and you'll appreciate this since you were just at the ranch, um, we made a hooked rug with um, a G, which we meant for Graceland. We meant the G to symbolize Graceland. Well, our next trip to Memphis, Vernon actually gave us a tour of the ranch and here is that rug at the ranch. Wow. And we told Vernon, we go, we gave him that. So and it was in the house. It was in the house. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. So. And that had to mean a lot to you that oh, he it, used it. We, yeah. Yeah, we had also given him a um, St. Christopher's medal, which we figured he wouldn't know what it was. But we bought him a silver and gold, which back then was a lot of money. Um, St. Christopher's Medal because he traveled a lot, so we thought that was appropriate. So we gave him that, not for any occasion, we just gave it to him one day. And we said, well, you probably don't, we, meaning my roommate and I, um, we said, well, you probably don't know what this is. And he goes, yeah, it's a St. Christopher's Medal. You're not Catholic, but, but he knew what it was. Yeah. And he goes, it's because I travel, right? And we said, yeah. When they had the Graceland auction, what, 10 years ago? Yeah. It was in it the came up in there. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So he kept stuff. That's incredible. Yeah. He had a lot of stuff. He had a lot but there's of also stuff. a lot of fake stuff out there too. Is unfortunately, there? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, too bad we couldn't get that back for you. I know they were asking. I bet that. it went for crazy money. It went. I mean, I think we paid back in 1969. I think we paid 200 for it. Yeah, that was a lot of money in '69. And that was a lot of money back then. Yeah, that was more than a week's pay, wasn't it? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just a secretary. Yeah. Um, but it was like over a thousand they wanted for it. Wow. So I have no idea where it is now. Yeah. But it had the keys to one of the cars on it, 
So it was being used. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That had to feel good. It always felt good. And so yeah. you took pictures. You Your thing was you took a lot of pictures of I Elvis. I took a lot of pictures. More than a thousand out here mm -hmm. that you own. Oh, yeah. You have them. And, um, and I always asked him for it. Everybody goes, oh, didn't he get mad? I said, we. I always asked him before I took a picture. And after asking him about 10 times, he goes, okay, don't ask me. Just, it's okay. Just, just do what you just do. Just do what you do. Don't worry about That's it. That's incredible. He goes, if I ever don't want you to take one, I will tell you. But he never told me. That's fair. That's amazing. So, you know. And I always tried to get just him. I always tried to cut everybody out but him in the pictures. <laughs> Most of my pictures, you'll notice, it's just him. Yeah. I said, heck, everybody else get out of the way. <laughs> get out, move. <laughs> That's funny. So, um... I don't want to keep you, but I thank you so much oh, for pleasure. for telling us this story. This is, you know, my my subscribers are Elvis fans for the most part. Now all of them are not, but most of them are Elvis fans. So this will mean a lot. And um, is can they correspond with you? Do you have oh, a yeah. website? Do I'm you on have, Facebook. No, I don't have a website. But I'm you have Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Sandy. And I love hearing from other fans. S A N D I. N D I. Miller. Miller. Mm -hmm. Okay. So look them, look her up, friends. So tell us a funny story. Tell us something that nobody would know, nobody would think about. That's that's, that's funny. even a thing between you and Elvis. Just a thing. <laughs> um. Oh gosh, there were. So I heard. I probably shouldn't mention this, oh, but ahead. I heard that you kissed Elvis. Oh yeah, Mindy. He was a hugger and a kisser. He was a hugger and a kisser. It wasn't just me. It was anybody he was comfortable with. Or, yeah. You know, you always got a, a hello kiss and a hug and a goodbye kiss and a hug. Wow. And, um, he was just, he was very affectionate in a very non-threatening way. Yeah. Um, he was just a sweetheart. You know, he was so sweet. He was, like I said, he was quirky, but he was just, he was so sweet and he was fun to be around. Um but yeah, funny stories, oh gosh, he was just, oh gosh, there was one time, um, not relating to anything to do with me, but um, he was going to the studio and we were to follow him, he asked us to follow him so that we could also get into the studio. Well, the signal lights were out on Santa Monica Boulevard and so traffic was getting kind of nutsy and <laughs> poor Joe. He told Joe, pull over, pull over. And he gets out and he's got on, you know, black slacks and a red shirt and a black cape. This is in the middle of summer, in the middle of the day, and he gets out in the middle of Santa Monica Boulevard in Beverly Glen, I think it was, I don't know. Um, and he starts directing traffic. He's just standing out there in his little outfit. And he's waving the cars. And Joe was like, get in the car, get in the car. <laughs> I, we were we were laughing hysterically, and then finally the cops came, and he got back in his limo and. So he held he held, he held he the intersection he until the police came. Can you imagine people driving by going, God, that looks an awful lot like no, no, that Elvis. That can't be Elvis. That's what they do today. That's not Elvis. Oh, he play off that. There was a carload of tourists. You know the uh, the people that give tours around Beverly yeah. Hills, and. Um, big white van drove up and Elvis was out at the get gate talking to the fans. This big white van pulls up with the people getting the movie star home tour and they, because there was a bunch of people standing at Elvis's house, the lady rolled down the window and she goes, who lives here? You know, why are you all standing around here? Who lives here? And Elvis goes, I don't know. But he goes, but Danny Thomas lives right down there. And they're like, oh, thank you. And they, and they drive, they, drive off. they take pictures of Danny Thomas's house. And they come back and they stopped on the way back. And the lady rolled down the window. She goes, you know, you look a lot like Elvis Presley. He goes, oh, I know. I get it all the time. And they took up. And they drove off. And we're like. What in the world? <laughs> you guys don't know it, but. <laughs> Yeah. It'd be hilarious if they have pictures that they found pictures later and went, oh, what oh in the world? Oh my gosh, that was.